Hello and welcome to the Saratoga Springs Planning Commission for March 23rd, 2023. I've asked uh, Commissioner Audrey Barton to lead us in the pledge. So I'll turn the time over to her. Please repeat the pledge with me. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> tonight for roll call, Commissioner Reed Ryan is on his way, so we'll welcome him as soon as he gets here. Uh, next item is time has been set aside for public input for any person to express ideas, concerns, comments, questions, or issues that are not listed as a public hearing on the agenda. Comments are limited to three minutes. I'm going to close a public comment at this time. And we're going to move on to um, the first section of our Planning Commission meeting this evening, which is public hearings. Um, the first item is a Wander Village Plan 1, Major Amendment 3, located at approximately 4 inch south in Redwood Road. Oakwood Homes is the applicant. Greg Polly has the applicant. It, who's presenting that? Is that Gina? Okay, I'll turn the mic on for you. Thanks, Greg. You're welcome to come up here. Hopefully this will be short and sweet. The application before you is a major amendment to the Wander Village Plan 1. If, if you remember correctly, this is what is mostly done in the Wander development. So this northeast corner of 400 and Redwood Road, this encompasses, this village plan amendment encompasses this, just this area. The proposed amendment is just the plant, the fencing guidelines page 51 in the village plan. So just to give you a little bit of background on this, uh, as you can see on this village plan, uh, the picture of the project perimeter fencing. When the developer installed the fence, their fencing contractor installed a straight picket. Now, if you can see up here, you can see the step, it's called a staggered picket. And so all of their plan, their construction, accepted construction drawings were actually for the staggered picket. But when it was actually, in, the fence was installed, the developer or the, um, that was not installed, it was just a straight picket. As you can see on the inner internal privacy fence. So we contacted the developer and Greg here is the one that I spoke with. He contacted his um, he contacted his thank you. Oh my goodness. Supplier <laughs> and was informed that they didn't have this, they didn't make the staggered picket um, in that color is what I understand. And so anyways, they installed a regular fence. Well, we're, we're talking about thousands and thousands of linear feet of fencing. And just to kind of give you a picture, you can see the difference uh, of what it has been installed. The packet includes the two letters. So what we did as staff is we went back to look at the original page in the village plan. The reason um, legal had, we worked with Ke Fred, Fred and Kevin on this, and the reason we have are having them do a major amendment is one, because it is a change to their development guidelines, their design guidelines. And so the re this page is different than what they have approved, well, what we have approved in village two and what is being proposed in Village 3. And so the reasoning is, is you can see the project perimeter fence and the little blue, and then the red, and then the green. So if you go to the map, it, it basically is the legend. And so according to this page, the way that I interpreted it was that it was a staggered picket. That's what I believe the, the developer understood it to be and why the construction documents were created the way that they were. However, what was installed was different. So because of the way that this was set up with it being a legend of the type of fencing that it is in the pictures, 
legal has counseled us to have the developer do a major amendment so that it can be changed. And again, I showed the community plan and village plan two, and I believe I showed village plan three, what was proposed there, and they're all similar. And it gives them more of an option so that supply and demand, those types of things can be addressed and they can make it optional to do a staggered picket or a straight picket or you know, the open space fencing and that type of thing. So this is what is proposed in the new guidelines is they have created it similar to two in phases or village two and three. Um, with that, staff does recommend approval for this amendment. Any questions? Um, this is a public hearing, so I'll go ahead and open this up for public comment. Recording in progress. I'm going to close the public comment at this time. <laughs> And do you have anything you need to, would like to add to the presentation, Greg? No, I, I would just like. Stopped. <laughs> I, I would just like to add that that uh, again, this would give us more flexibility. But in the, but in this instance, oh, yeah. Can uh, I, I need you to state your name for the record. Sorry, Greg. Sure, uh, Greg Paley with Oakwood Homes. And then address two hundred six East Winchester Street in Murray. Utah. Okay. Not continue, sorry to interrupt you. <laughs> no problem. Um, as you mentioned, uh, it, it, or as, as uh, Ms. Grampy mentioned, it allows us more flexibility, but, but more importantly, it allows us, it, it, that product doesn't exist right now, the staggered, and that, that was called to our attention. And so we not only uh, reached out to our vendor to confirm that that didn't exist, but we reached out to um, National National Vinyl Products, is, which is one of the largest uh, fencing providers in the nation. I said, sorry, that doesn't exist. Um, so uh, hence, hence we came back and talked to Ms. Grampy about it, and she's been great, and we've worked, uh, we work with staff and legal to come up with a solution, so we hope it's acceptable. Okay. Um, I will go ahead and turn this over to the commission for comments and questions. Commissioner Kilgore. Um, I, I really do. As far as the pictures go, I really do like the the fencing that you know. Whether I, th I think it's the I'm looking at the ones that you have installed, and it's just really pretty. It's Thank really you. Really nice. Um, and it, it's not white. Uh, it's all off. They're off colors that but you're actually installing. So the perimeter fencing is is tan, and that was tan. what required to do in our community plan. So we're following through with that in the. Building. Oh, that's terrific. Yeah, because. Um, yeah, it's just, it just it looks really nice. I was just wondering, um, uh, was there a reason why we wanted, or or the the you wanted staggered originally? And is there is it just mostly just a visual aesthetic? There's no like physical reason why it had to be staggered. No, staggered. okay. It, it doesn't. Nothing in our code requires a staggered picket. So nothing in our code requires the fencing types that they have proposed. This is totally a design element within their community plan. Okay, so it doesn't affect like the height or height is for 16. visual reasons. It's all just really aesthetic. It's yeah, if you remember, um, a, last year, two years ago, we did an amendment to the fencing guidelines for the taller fence around Rocky Mountain Power mm -hmm. or utility companies. That's the only other variation in height, but and that's outside of our code. However. Um, with it being a utility such as it is, then mm -hmm. we don't, you know, we allowed that to happen. Okay. And then I still don't understand, I don't get this part. So uh, by changing this, is are all the villages now going to look, it's going to be consistent throughout? Correct. Throughout. Okay. It will be consistent. Okay. All right. right. So it's not just this one village. It's going to be for everybody. Right. And you haven't already built other ones with a staggered fence. You haven't done that? No. Oh, okay. No. Village one is the only one that has perimeter fencing up and installed. Village two, they're waiting for this amendment. Well, village two can actually go forward because it is as, um, oh, Sarah, can you put the cursor back on that? As, as it shows here, just in village, well, going back to this, it, the staggered picket was not, was not installed. It was the plain fencing. 
but it was nothing in Village 2. Sorry, I need to go back to the one I'm looking at. There we go. Village 2 is over on the right-hand side, mm -hmm. and that's how it was set up. Sim similar to the community plan, Village 3 is, very, is the same thing that was approved by the Planning Commission sent to this council. So the way that they have it outlined in Village 2 is fine, so they can move forward. However, we need to correct this problem to, to show consistency. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the commission? Okay, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion. I move to forward a recommendation of approval regarding the Jordan Promenade Village Plan 1 Amendment 3 with the findings and conditions in the staff report. We have a motion from Commissioner Barton. Do we have a second? I'll second it. I have a second from Commissioner Burns. Oh, do we have a question on the motion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That passes unanimously. Unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, on um, Zoom right now, so we can do that one. Okay. Who's presenting on our side for that one? I got that. Okay. Yeah. Just a second. I need to let them all in, and then. So what we're going to do is we're going to change the, the order of the items, and we're going to have the first business item, the Walmart Field Station Site Plan, NAS Residential, located at 136 West Crossroads Boulevard. Ryan Alvarez as the applicant. We're going to go with that one now. Do we have to change, change it? Through a no, I can do that. Great, thanks. Um, just a second. I have two more. There's four in there, so, okay, so then one more. Why is it? <clears throat> Ryan, can you hear us? Yes, we can. Thank you for uh, organizing this and getting the Zoom all set up. Much appreciated. Okay, Kendall, go ahead. Good evening, commissioners. Um, Sarah, can you put the cursor back there? Yeah, let me share the screen. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, this is the Walmart fuel station that's being proposed in the southwest corner of the Walmart property, um, as shown in the graphic here, regional commercial zone. Um, they're only using 1.2 acres for this site out of the 20 plus that they have for the property. Um, <coughs> they're parking, they have sufficient parking, even with what's being reduced, they're adding, or they had well above what they needed before taking any off, so they still have more than is required landscaping. They're adding 5% more than what's required. Um, they have plenty of accesses there. We, we did recommend that they add a different access dedicated just for that, but by code we can't enforce that and they couldn't really find a way to make it work very well with what they had planned. And so we are uh, moving forward with what um, was presented. Um, there's plenty, like I said, there's two from the north, two from the east or west, one from the south and one from the um, east to get in there. Um, those are the elevations for it. They meet all the design criteria, architectural design criteria. Um, they are adding, they're taking a bunch of trees out, but they're adding new trees because right now where the parking lot's going to be, where the pumps are, there's islands right now with uh, trees and stuff in it. They're going to remove that, but they know that they are going to add new ones. Um, I think it's 80% or more of their plants are drought tolerant, which is nice. Um, is there any questions on that? I know it's pretty would quick, the, but... Would the applicant like to add anything? 
Uh, yeah, sure. Good evening. This is Ryan Alvarez, uh, civil consultant with uh, Walmart and presenting uh, or kind of working with the fuel station team here. Um, thank you again for hearing our case. And I know this was kind of out of the norm to have uh, some Zoom attendees. So much appreciated on you guys accommodating us and working with us to provide this. It's been a pleasure to work uh, with city staff here and, uh, and, and get into this point and be able to present with you guys here. Um, just kind of some further background. This is kind of um, Walmart's kind of... Uh, um, kind of nationwide fuel program that they're rolling out and uh, rolling out to many of the communities adjacent and throughout Utah, um, similar to this site here. So happy to answer any specific um, questions to the fuel station, how it kind of interacts with the adjacent parking lot there, kind of what the um, what the kind of system will be with the fuel station or convenience store. We also have our architecture team here available to ask or to answer any specifics um, on the building. Um, as well as any any other questions that I may not be able to answer. So thank you again for all your time tonight and uh, happy to answer any further questions. And Nikki, do we need Ryan to give him give his address? No? Okay. I will open this up to the commission for comments. Commissioner Kilgore. <clears throat> So this is a administrative process. So I always like to ask uh, uh, the applicant for the record: um, Are you willing to agree to comply with the uh, conditions in in the uh, city planning staff packet? Yes, we are. Okay. Um, there are a number of can complies in the uh, staff packet. So, uh, for example, with the various planting, landscaping, and tree regulations. Um, so when we were going through, there were some red lines, but we were, we, he, the applicant requested that we get it, planning commission, and that they would get those fixed before sending it on further. Okay. But yeah, they, he knows about all that, and they had said that that was good. Does the applicant expect to have any issues with any of the con can complies and turning them into complies then at this, at this point? Nope, we, uh, we were able to review those um, um, with city staff here and just kind of walk through each of those with our internal teams here, the landscaping team, uh, civil team, and, and kind of the Walmart team as well. Um, we're happy to make those final adjustments uh, and updates to the plans to comply with those, with those comments, uh, and we'll get those updated prior to proceeding any further with the project. Okay, thank you for that. Um, so uh, uh, looking at the overhead or overview, um, there's no access to uh, crossroads uh, from the fueling station sec area. Is that right? There's the one in the middle that you have there to. There is one. Yeah. Further to the east, right there. Right? It's in the middle of the picture at the bottom. It's the main entrance if you're coming off crossroads. Oh, oh okay. Walmart. Yeah. So you go through the. the yeah. Where but is down and up into the fuel. Into the fuel. Okay. So not within. Well, I guess that is part. Of, that is part of the fuel section area. Then, okay. I, yeah, I didn't. Uh, I thought of that as just the. It, so that already exists. So you're not creating another uh, access to cross. There, it, there becomes issues because you have to have a certain amount of feet between entrances and stuff, and where it would coming straight into the fuel pumps kind of <laughs> might cause a problem. And I mean, so it, it, it is what it is. Okay. I hate saying that, but <laughs> okay. Without redesigning the whole thing, that's. Right, okay. Um, and then you, um, you did explain that there was adequate parking even with this section removed from the parking space. So, so that's, that's true. That was one of my questions. And then um, how about uh, any spillover parking from the, um, or any circumstance or any situations anticipated from the uh, businesses that are, is that west to, uh, yeah. the fuel station? I mean, that's, Any anticipate because I know parking has been shared. That's that bank, and I don't mm -hmm. feel like that bank is very busy. I mean, north of that is where it's the, the mm -hmm. supercuts and the dollar store, and that that usually has parking left over. I mean, right now there's RVs and stuff parked where this is going to be, and that might be some of an issue. But other than that, I mean, down here it's usually pretty empty. Okay. All right. Um, and then. Uh, um, what are the hours of operation for the, uh, for the fuel station? Brian, that'll be on you. I can't remember. <laughs> I don't think I asked that because we didn't do a sign permit, and usually I ask for that. 
No worries. Chris, I know you are usually in, in tune with that. Yeah, so the the convenience store itself will hold the same hours of operation as the super center. They will, um, if allowed, we'd like to be able to sell fuel 24 hours a day, though, just at the pump. So say at 3 o'clock in the morning, if somebody needs to buy gas, they can purchase gas with a credit card. But the convenience store will not be open at that time. It'll have the same hours as the super center. Okay, so I uh, can't remember. In that case, I was thinking about the lighting restrictions, you know, if, if it was 24 hours. They, there's <coughs> one that's like after hours, it has to be dimmed by 50. Correct. The, the lighting for the fuel station. Hours, something like that. The lighting for the fuel station will yeah. match that as the center as well, too. Okay. So if it is a 24 hour operation, then no problem with complying with the, uh, the evening lighting uh, ordinances, then. Is that right? That is correct, yes. Okay. All right. Um, oh, and then uh, for snow removal, um, any anticipated issues with, uh, by taking that part out um, as far as, you know, getting snow removal and such, and, and with the remaining parking, uh, parking area? Um, no concerns. We will continue to work with uh, the facility maintenance team at this store to uh, maintain that snow removal um, and just continue operations to include the, uh, the fuel station area as well. Okay. Well, and so with the um, entrance in that that you know in that center area, uh, if you do you anticipate like large semis and trucks to be able to navigate through that. Yeah, so if you see on the, it'll come up in a loop down, that's those black lines that come across, that's uh, the proposed um, semi-truck route to come in and oh. load up or dispatch the fuel to the tanks. And they go out the same way as well? Well, then it would go up. Yeah, it goes up. It goes up and out through the other entrance closer by the garden center entrance that one out the west side okay so a, a traffic study is not necessary for for this project at all not really because I, I don't think that was required uh, well that is reviewed by engineering so they could answer that question the, the, uh... am I on thank you we, we did talk about the, the traffic early on. It was it, when the Walmart subdivision was created, it, was, it, included, it included all of that. And so this just kind of rolls into what the trips to and from would have been anyway. So we don't, we don't anticipate it changing anything uh, in that regard. So the, the traffic we don't, we don't see. We didn't ask for any a, a specific transportation. Our traffic impact study, just because it was it was done as part of the, the original subdivision. Okay, yeah, I was just wondering if you know. Um, usually, you wouldn't have semi trucks go into Walmart um, until you add a fuel station, because now it's you know it's a different need uh, or a different uh, product that's being provided for those kinds of um, patrons as well. So I was just wondering if that would change some uh, patterns because you wouldn't normally have. I would think, well, I guess maybe you would for delivery, but they would all go to the rear or the, to the areas where you would drop off the, you know, for delivery. Um, but now you have it on, on crossroads. So just, and then having to go up through, you know, to get out. So I was just wondering if that would have uh, made a difference, but um, I guess you don't, the city didn't anticipate that, or uh, that to be an issue. No. Okay. You, are you talking about deliveries to the store or, or fuel deliveries? Yeah, no, so I was thinking um, usually you wouldn't have the semi-trucks there except to deliver product inventory to, you know, to, the, uh, to the store, but now you're going to have a fuel station, so, the, so there would be semi-trucks now coming on across the roads in that area in order to get fueled. So that, I thought that would change a bit of the, the vehicular uh, customers, uh, and that might uh, be an issue with uh, some traffic flows, but if you don't... I just want to ask the question, and if the city doesn't anticipate that, then I we guess it's not an issue. No. And as, 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 if uh, I may address that, the applicant Chris Everts, um, the fuel station is not designed for semi trucks to fuel up. Okay. Right. So it's not designed for that. The spacing between the pumps, the distance to pull out, and everything else—it's for 
daily customers. Um, it, you know, you may see a, a truck with a trailer behind it, somebody, you know, lawn equipment or something like that. But as far as large semis go, it's not designed for that. So they won't be utilizing this for fueling. Okay. Uh, there will be, as you as was stated before, the semi truck for the offloading of the fuel equipment. Uh, there is that vehicle. Most of the other deliveries, since it is only a 1,400 square foot building, are the small panel, smaller panel trucks, your Pepsi, your Frito Lays, things of that nature. Uh, but you no, know, it's not designed, or nor do we anticipate it to be used for uh, semi truck fueling, like a truck stop. Okay, thank you for that. That eliminates yes. that issue. That eliminates that question. Then I appreciate it. That's it for me. Thanks. Just to reemphasize what Kendall said, and and the the Walmart folks as well, and Ryan is that we did we did require them to do a it's an auto turn analysis, make sure that those delivery vehicles can get in and out of there because sometimes these these are oriented and that that can be a problem. But that as as Kendall pointed out, that information is has been presented and, and we feel comfortable that they'll be able to navigate with the fuel delivery uh, to and from the site. So great. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Kilgore. Commissioner Barton. I actually just have a question kind of for everybody. I, I mean, I think the building looks really nice, the convenience store part of it, but I'm just worried about some random building being put in the corner of the parking lot, right? Have you, and I guess I haven't driven around enough Walmarts to see these convenience stores added afterwards, right? And so have you guys seen those someplace? Like, do they look out of place? Do they look okay usually? They look okay. Okay, I just, it's so close to the bank side of it. I'm like, man, are we just throwing something up here that's not, I mean, have you? I think in Springville. Is it Springville or Spanish Fork? Was it added afterwards? I guess that's my thing. I see all of them going at first, right? When sometimes they go in as soon as they build the Walmart, but I've never, yeah. I guess I've never seen one that's after. And so I'm like, oh man, are we throwing up just some building? Again, the building looks great. Like it, it looks nice. I'm just afraid of some building just being that close, you know, to the bank and just some odd building, I guess, being put there. It's a good corner to do it. There's, there's less parking down in those corners. Right, so it's the best corner to do it. I'm yeah. just aesthetically, I'm but, like, oh yeah, man, I have I, some I, random I building that you can, uh, right? Yeah, I can't think of a specific example where there's one been added after the fact. But. Okay, I just was wondering if anybody had seen it. It looked like um, I just. I'm gonna, is it okay if I jump in? I've seen them and I don't think they look bad. I've seen them before being with the Walmart, just not added in later. I've seen them added after. Okay. And it, they're more in the rural communities that you'll see them after. So like yeah. out in Vernal, they have one that added after. Um, and they look pretty good. And I think for this specific site, having where it's at, that's a pretty dead space already as far as parking goes. And so I think... Uh, yeah, the from space is I, great. Just yeah, throwing some building in there is weird. I think it'll all weird. kind of flow in really well with the bank that's right there, and I don't think it'll end up looking like an empty building. I just, I just wanted to ask that, so I'm like, oh, it's a little random, but okay, yeah. thanks. Thank you, Commissioner Barton. Any other comments from the commission? I do something. I will entertain a motion at this time. Ready. There it is. Oh. Yeah, there's the elevations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks great. Like, I think it's a good-looking building. Yeah. Did you ask for a motion? Yes, yeah. I asked for a motion. Sorry. <laughs> okay. That's okay. I just, I'm just thinking of other thoughts and stuff like that. So. Just looking for the page here. Okay, where is it? The... Oh, I can make it. Um, I move that the Planning Commission forward a recommendation of approval to the City Council for the proposed Walmart fuel station site plan located at 136 West Crossfields Boulevard with the findings and conditions in the staff report. We have a motion from Commissioner Barton. Do we have a second? I'll second. I have a com motion from Commissioner Barton and a second from Commissioner Kilgore. Do we have a question on the motion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That passes. Okay. Um, thanks well, for zooming in if you're still yes, there. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, item number two in the, under the public hearings, amendments to Title 19 Land Development Code of the City of Saratoga Springs, Chapter 19.09, Off-Street Parking, City Initiated. Who's doing that one today? I will. Sarah? Yeah. Okay. Um, let's get back to the right. Okay, we are changing some parking code requirements just to clarify when the parking code applies. Uh, we would like it to be clear that it applies to sites that get amended or added to. 
And then uh, we were just coming across an issue where parking stalls were too far from the front entrance. And so we wanted to add clarification. So then based on the size of the commercial space, we wanted those to be closer. And then obviously if it's a bigger commercial space, they would need to be farther away. So we wanted to add some walking distance requirements so that we weren't getting parking stalls counting that weren't really reasonable for walking. That's all. <laughs> this is a public hearing, so I'll go ahead and open this for public. I'll close it as there's no public for comment this evening. And uh, I'll open this up to the commission for comments and questions. Commissioner Wright, and then Commissioner Kilgore. A beat Commissioner Kilgore. For, yes. Um, <laughs> so the, the distances on the table, I actually like the work done. I'm just wondering, did is this uh, taken from anywhere else? Is there a precedent anywhere else around the distance? Or how did we choose? say 1,500 square feet equals 150 feet, et cetera? We went off of businesses in our city. So we looked at what we have and the sizes of those, and how close the parking was. And so we made sure that we could, uh, that, bus that this was working for businesses in our city, but then it was ruling out things like parking behind a big box store. All right, thank you. That's all I have, Mr. Chair, thanks. Thank you, Commissioner Ryan. Commissioner Kilgore. You guys are working against each other. <laughs> well, this, I, for whatever reason, my hands don't seem to be hot. Yeah, I think my hands are cold too. Uh, are these uh, distance, sorry, it's probably in there, I just didn't visualize it. Is it. Are they the maximum distance or the minimum distance? They're the maximum. So that's the furthest you can be away. Right. Okay, all right. Yeah, I guess that's obvious, but I didn't, I couldn't figure that out. All right, thank you, that's Well, it. and they could have things like employee <laughs> parking in the back, you know, but then that wouldn't, that, that, so as, so this is clarifying that the stalls need to be within a certain distance of the customer entrance to count. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Kilgore. Any other comments or questions from the commission? And when we say the furthest away, they can be the furthest where the parking starts away? We say... Um, Fred, go ahead. We say within, within that walking distance, path of travel. That's what the code says. Oh, within. So, yeah. yeah. So, placed within... So, the furthest away parking spot cannot be any more than whatever that says? Correct. Starts. Okay. Right. Any other comments or questions from the commission? <clears throat> I will entertain a motion then. Do it. Um, based upon the evidence and explanations received today, I move to forward a positive recommendation to the city council for proposed amendment to title 19, chapter 1909 with the findings and conditions in the staff report. Did your, your mic sound like it cut out? Yeah. Okay, we have a motion from Commissioner Burns. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Have a second from Commissioner Wilden. Do we have a question on the motion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That passes. Okay, um, next item is approval of the minutes. Do we have any changes or? If no changes, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. I have a motion from Commissioner Ryan. Do we have a second? I'll second it. I have a second from Commissioner Barton. Uh, do we have a question on the motion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That passes. Um, commission comments. Can anybody like to make a comment this evening? I, I have a quick question. I didn't want to do it while the wander gentleman was here, but... Um, I was trying to understand the timeline of events. Did they install the incorrect fence? So is there any concern that they got away with one? No, the standard in their document exceeded our code, but since they put that in their document, that becomes their document. So what they amended it to still meets the code. 
Yeah, and I, I think I, I understand that. Like, what we got it to still meets it, but, like, they installed the wrong fence to start with. And if I was um, totally um, uneducated in the world of vinyl fencing, if I look at example A that they should have put in and example B, I would say example B costs a lot less. Right. And hence, we get letters from suppliers and from things saying, oh, my goodness, magically, this doesn't exist anymore. Right. So um, I... We're not worried about that from a city's perspective. I didn't want to like accuse them of anything here. And I guess if they want to really go back and watch the recording, they can find out anyways. But to me, it just didn't pass the scratch test. Well, we certainly didn't have to approve it. The council certainly doesn't have to approve it. Your, your concerns are valid. Yeah, they, they did it from a standpoint of they wanted to make sure that they were going to be able to change it up. Yeah. And only because someone caught it? Right. He, uh, he <coughs> Excuse me. I, I have to, I, I agree with you on that. Yeah, like I don't know I, if it's well. I'm a rabble rouser. I didn't want to. I, I know I'm always you know mixing things up, and I didn't want. Maybe it was because the traffic wore me down tonight when I was late getting here. <laughs> but again, it just didn't feel like it passed the scratch test. And I, I'm not like I don't think it's in the city's. You know, nothing we could have done. I guess differently from the city's perspective. But I just really worry that you know they're walking away kind of secretly, going like this, pump, pumping their fist because they. Well, no. And again, I don't have any basis because I haven't gone and got vinyl quotes, you know, <laughs> recently. But well, I don't know what the difference is. I guess I don't know that much about vinyl either, about putting the the brick barrier, you know, the brick middle parts and then the vinyl. Is there not connecting parts to that? Like, I don't understand why it's not available, like you're saying. Yeah. But, I mean, you got to remember that we can blame everything on COVID. And COVID shortages probably did make it not available. Could have changed. Well, yeah. well, that's what I'm wondering. Where's the shortage on the brick part? Because the vinyl part, obviously, they still have. So I guess that was my question. Did they answer that? The vinyl panels staggered. So, like, and that's what they're changing is the offset in the vinyl panel. Like, it's not the same thing as the vinyl panel. You know, instead of being a flat surface, you have in and out. And, and they were saying that um, they have letters from their. Those, their those panels aren't available anymore. Okay. Okay. Did you have something, Fred? Yeah, the stone columns were still installed. Well, I didn't understand that. The sentence. stone, right. co the columns? Mm -hmm. no. Oh, they weren't either? Not, not to that level. So not to the... Yeah, I didn't see those. They were showing. So there are some stone columns, but not... At the weren't level. they marked at those, at the different spots that where they had to install those? I thought Gina and I looked at that. Oh, potentially. So uh, I figure that since they were uh, already surpassing what was required in our code, um, and then even with the change, they still are, or at least they still meet it. And so that's why I don't really have so much of an issue with that. I guess my issue was simply that they were doing it, with, and then only after they were caught did they come back with yeah. the, and that, that goes against the, you know, the way things are supposed to be done. And, so that's where I have an issue, whether it's for saving money or whatever it was, but it was the fact that we had to catch them and then, you know, basically threaten that they won't get their bond if, if they don't, uh, you know, make a change or resolve the issue, I guess. Right. <clears throat> that was the only thing that uh, kind of stuck with me. But otherwise, I mean, they, they met code, so. Or they do meet code. And if we compare it to similar community plans, um, we're not seeing um, anything different. Like, they're still meeting the anywhere. So what they're... What they put up is similar to what we're seeing. Mm -hmm. Right. Sorry, Mr. Chair, I just wanted to get that out there, but I, I appreciate the work of the of the city staff on it as well, and bringing it to the attention, and yeah, slapping of the wrist Good a little bit. Good. Good job. Um, director's report. Do we have a meeting Sorry. on the thirteenth? Or, am I allowed to ask a question? Yes, though? go ahead. Sorry. I thought. Did, um, sorry. <laughs> how, what, how worried are we about flooding? So, um, flooding, we're, uh, we're, well, so flooding is a concern mm -hmm. that we have to be aware of, for sure. Um, uh, and this, this, so we can't predict flooding, right? But if we get a lot of snow melt, if we get a warm spring, we're probably going to experience some flooding. And I don't know how that will impact us specifically, but city 
Community Manager is aware, Teleworks is aware, we have sandbags already pre-filled, so we're taking preparations and measures to be prepared for flooding. Uh, I don't have all of that information, but our city manager does, <laughs> so and our public works director does, but, but we are taking um, measures in case we do, uh, you know, preliminary measures in case to be ready, in case we oh, good. have some flooding to is there an area that we're more worried about in the city than, like, do you happen to know also? I don't know. There probably is. Anywhere that we've had a burn, you know, in recent years, those are more risky areas, if the, you know, depending on the state of the vegetation. So, um, but, but honestly, I couldn't. And, and all of those things are assessed. I'm just not able to. Yeah, sorry. i just throwing you out there, and I get it. Good questions. Yeah, and the state, the state has been, you know, passing information on to the city. Just, you know, keep in mind we're probably going to experience flooding, um, and we just can't predict it. But we're doing our best to be prepared. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions for or comments? I just remember to add one quick thing and follow up from uh, something I thought would be a great idea. Um, a couple meetings ago, as our legislative session is wrapped up, if we could at some point have like a debrief. Or as an agenda item. I would love that. That's a great idea. Things that are changing or uh, okay. things to be aware of. Nothing like a, you know, like a comprehensive seminar, but if we have like a 10 or 15 minute overview of here's some big things to be aware of, I think that would be beneficial for the commission. Yeah, yes. Uh, we as the city staff had our own debrief today internally, and then we have some legislative updates that will be, at the, some of our staff will be attending um, one in March and one in April. And then there will be a round of code amendments as a result of those changes. Um, so we'll be seeing some code amendments related to um, legis some, some <laughs> this is kind of funny, subdivisions won't go to council anymore. So right now they go to planning commission and council, well they'll just go to council, or just come here. Um, there'll be a few other changes that you'll see as well as a result of the yeah, and so I'll put that on my, um, let me do that in May after we've gone to our, after planning staff have gone to our update sessions and we have some internal meetings, we have a good list, then let, then let me plan on doing that in May prior to that. Yeah, most of the changes go into effect 60 days after the session, so it gives us some time to, yeah. to prepare. So yeah, and so you'll be seeing of course, you'll be seeing all the land use changes here. The council will be seeing more changes related to other topics as well. And even though it doesn't directly apply to us, those would be, I would, those would be of interest as well, you know, just briefly saying these are things that are changing for the council. So great. And May is great, so that's awesome. Thank, thanks for doing that. Um, last year, I think they had um, something we could attend that was put on either by the league or the ombudsman office. Will they have something like that again this year? Do you know? Did they, so, um, we, yeah, I have an email I can forward. There's two, those two ones that I mentioned staff are going to, and you are welcome. There's a Zoom option. There, uh, there's an hour and a half. Um, they're both an hour and a half. And one is the next week, and one is April, in the first week of April. So okay. The 27th and then April 5th or something like that. So, do you want me to forward that? Yeah, if it's something we can attend on yeah, Zoom. It, yeah, it's, you can go in person or on Zoom, but I think it's kind of far north, so I'm just going on Zoom. But, um, but yeah, I'll forward that to everybody. And that you can definitely sit on, sit on the, in on that. The first one, um, there's two series. So, one is, let me just look right now. One. One is land use and the other is moderate income housing. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Mm -hmm. So those the first one next Wednesday from twelve to one thirty is moderate income housing and then the one after that on April fifth, is that the right date? Is it's the Wednesday after that is the land use. So I'll forward that so that anybody can attend. I got the email, but it was from the Utah League of Cities and Towns. So if yeah, you're a part of that it has yeah. Oh. Please send yes. it to me. Yeah, I think that came in the yeah email. Okay. Did everybody get that email from the Utah League of Cities and Towns? Because that's where you would oh, no. register and stuff. Too, right? city email. Can Can you send it to me? Yeah. 
Thank you. I'll just send it to everybody just so. Send it to me too, Sarah. Okay. Fred doesn't want to be left out. Yeah. <clears throat> and this would count towards um, training hours as well, right? Thank you. Um, but are we having a meet? Do we need a meeting on April 13th? Yes, we have a few items we'll be bringing to you on April 13th, so we definitely plan on that. And um, one of you, let's see here. So we had a council meeting two nights ago, and we had, Eric, could you ask all of your <coughs> questions? Are you ready for the directors? Any more questions from the commission? I. I Sorry, I just have one more request. So my old computer crashed, and along with it, my I forgot my login credentials for the city email okay. with it. So if I could just get, like I get the emails forwarded to my Gmail account, but for official communications, I need to be able to re-log back into that city account. So if I could get some IT help. I don't know, if you can send me the contact information. for I can't remember the IT guy's name or whatever. But okay. He's good at yelling at me when I don't figure it out. <laughs> yeah, he is. He is. <laughs> If you send it to the city, it forwards to my Gmail, so I still I'm still seeing everything. But I, when I want to like officially reply to someone or something, I need to be able to just do it from the city account. Sorry, your eyes were like oh, yeah. the IT guy. <laughs> His name's Kevin Carpenter. Yeah. Yeah. I've never yes. it's only been on the phone. Oh, and I've met him. Otherwise, and it's always been like very brief. He's very IT. That's the thing, right? He's like, he's an IT guy. Yeah. And he, do, he does a really good job with the IT stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we have five to choose from. We'll probably have that decided. Um, oh, I mean, it's up to the mayor, right? And, and so, but I'm thinking that'll be decided uh, in the next week, and then we can get that person rolling. So that's exciting news. Um, we had Brixton Park Flat B got approved by the council, and then we had a signage discussion by our city council. So we did um, we our code enforcement officer Brad did a spine audit of the commercial businesses to see how many violations we had. So out of over um, over 250, we had about 30 to 40 sign violations, and that ranges from downer signs to wall signs. Anyway, so we're gonna get those cleaned up, but then also our council wants us to look at some code amendments for signage. So you'll be seeing those sometime this year. <laughs> so. And, and then, yes, we do have several items that we're planning on for the 13th. Okay, do we need to go? It might be a bigger agenda if everything on here goes through. So, All right. so plan on. A little bit longer of a. I'm getting too used to these. <laughs> uh, getting used to these half hour, one I hour. I know, wait a bit. So, fair warning, that one might be a little bit longer. All right. Any other comments from the director or anyone else? Uh, do we need to go into a closed session tonight? Okay, then we will adjourn this meeting until April 13th. Guess who's not coming?